Hey kids, today I want to talk with you about a passage from Holy Scripture from Acts chapter 17 uh, that we're going to hear in church on Sunday morning. But I also want to go through some, some pictures and images that, that help us learn about this text and help us learn about Jesus as he is our creator and our king and our judge. Uh, but first, here's that scripture reading from Acts chapter 17. Uh, St. Paul is, is talking to some philosophers, some scholars from uh, Athens, and here's what he says to them. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. And as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man, the times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all, by raising him from the dead. Of course, referring to Jesus, who God raised from the dead. Now, uh, one image or, or drawing picture that the church has used to depict Jesus as our king and our judge, uh, and as our king, the creator and provider and, and sustainer, the one who, who keeps the world turning, the one who keeps the sun rising and and everything in creation working, um, is this picture here and, and others like it. Now this is a picture of Jesus uh, sitting on the judgment seat, sitting at the right hand of God. Uh, so next week is Ascension Day, and we hear how Jesus will rise up uh, from the earth uh, into heaven and sit at the right hand of God. And um, there'll be a video about that coming this week. But here he is sitting. Um, he's sitting as our judge. You can see a scale here, a balance. So if you put um, some heavy weight here, the balance will tip one way or the other. Um, that's showing that God will judge us on the last day, uh, whether or not we're worthy uh, to be with God forever. Um, is the balance going to weigh guilty or not guilty? Uh, but we know because it's Jesus who's doing the judging, and we trust in Jesus and believe he died for our sins. Uh, we know that the balance will be in our favor and, and we'll be judged worthy to live with God forever. And then over here, you have an image of, of Jesus as our king. Now, do you see this ball uh, that, that Jesus is holding in his right hand? Um, you can kind of see it's, it's a circle with a cross on it. Um, I've got a better picture of it here on this old hymnal. Um, you see a, a circle and a cross on top. Um, this is actually called a globus cruciger, or you can just call it a globe with a cross on it. Um, this is supposed to be the world, and, and this is the cross. Uh, now this, this globus cruciger, this globe with the cross on it, shows us that Jesus is the king of the whole world, and Jesus rules the world by the power of his cross. That means all of the ways that Jesus rules the world and, and directs it and, and commands and, and directs us as his people, he does so by the power of the cross. Um, he's our king and he rules us according to forgiveness and according to victory over death and according to victory over evil. Uh, so he rules the world with goodness and with forgiveness and with every good thing uh, from God. Uh, so that's what this... Uh, image represents, and, and that's what he's holding here. 
Now one interesting thing about this um, symbol is back in the old days and kind of the medieval times, uh, kings and queens, when, when they were uh, crowned uh, to be kings and queens in, in their kingdom, uh, they would have a, a coronation ceremony and, and they would be installed as the king or queen. And they would be handed um, a scepter, kind of a, a fancy probably gold or silver stick, and an orb or a globus cruciger. Uh, so they would hold this, this orb and scepter. Now, maybe you kids have seen this before. If you've ever seen the movie Frozen, uh, which I've watched with my daughter Penny probably, I don't know, 100, 200, 1,000 times, enough times to know that uh, in that movie, Queen Elsa, when she's crowned, uh, she's given uh, an orb and scepter, a scepter and a, a globus cruciger, although it's not a globe with a cross on it. I forget. It's a maybe a flower on top of the gold. Well, anyways, it's uh, they're, what they're doing is copying that, that orb and scepter that the kings and queens would get. Now, the reason in the old days the kings and queens would, would get the orb and scepter is to show that their rule in their kingdom is only under the authority uh, and, and the promise and the, the permission of Jesus, who's the king of all creation, who sits as king above all things. And so they hold the globe with the cross to say, Jesus has given me permission to rule this little kingdom according uh, to his will and his ways, uh, but he's the true king of, of all creation. And, and so um, I hold this, this globe, this world, with the cross because that's, that's the capital K, king. Um, I have here another um, picture that I wanted to show you. Uh, maybe you've never noticed this, uh, but these um, banners of the Lord's Prayer, they, they hang uh, below the balcony. So if you go into church and look backwards at St. John's, these hang there. And you can see another um, globe and cross. Uh, in the petition, uh, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, the, the closing words of the, the Lord's Prayer. You see this image of, of the globe and the cross. Um, this is the kingdom of God. We're in the kingdom of God. Jesus is ruling us by the power of his cross and his forgiveness and his victory over sin and death. Um, so we recognize wherever we are, wherever we trust in Jesus and his cross, uh, wherever we're baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection, we're in God's kingdom. And there Jesus is our king. Uh, so that means Jesus is our king today, and he's with us today when we remember this in his word and sacrament. And Jesus will always be our king, uh, even in the new creation when all things are perfect. And when Jesus' cross uh, redeems and perfects and, and finishes creation and, and we'll be with him forever.